So I trust everyone heard that sound. I don't mean the beautiful siren song of a 50cc two-stroke engine. I mean that, that grinding squeal of sketchy old drum brakes that really aren't getting the job done anymore. I'm Jonathan from the Crankshaft Journal, and bad brakes are a common ailment for old mopeds like our Gorelli. And it's one of the problems we're going to tackle today. The other job I'm throwing in is the tires. Why? Because you're going to probably do those jobs together anyway. You're going to have the wheels off the bike, the brakes are definitely going to need work, and oh, the tires, they'll be in terrible shape. Almost, almost guaranteed. Remember, mopeds that you encounter on the market these days, for the most part, are emerging from maybe a 30 to 40 year slumber in the back of some garage. Tires dry rotting, you know, brakes delaminating. They're going to be in awful shape. And even if you can ride the bike home, you know, taking your chances, it's quite a gamble. Even if you can ride it home, to make it truly roadworthy, you have to put new tires and new brakes on it as soon as you can. So, even though it makes the video too long doing both of these things, we're going to get right to it. So the tire slash brake job really kicks off with taking the wheels off and you have to disconnect the brakes before you do that. Uh, before you do any of this though, make sure you have some blocks of wood around, something to prop up the forks and the rear swing arm. You need a 10 millimeter bolt, um, excuse me, a 10 millimeter wrench for the, the brake bolts and also the, the nuts that hold the um, fender on and then you'll need a 17 millimeter for the forks. If you've ever worked on old bicycles that don't have quick release nuts on them, this will all be very familiar. Actually, whoops, wait a minute, let's, let's disconnect this first. I'm going to use the box end here and you can just slide that right out. Very basic. One of the nice things about mopeds, they're a great bridge. If you're used to working on bicycles and you're pretty competent with that and you're interested in working on motorcycles, mopeds can really bridge the gap. They're very much like working on a bicycle. Uh, just a few complications that are more, uh, more akin to what you find on motorcycles and they'll if nothing else, they'll show you that working on motorcycles is not really that hard. Here's the speedometer drive. Right here. Just loosen that with your hand. This is also very... Well, this would be the same on an old bicycle or an old motorcycle. They're all pretty much the same. But let's get our props ready. You know, the, the center stands on these machines makes them much easier to work on. Easier to park, yes, but the real purpose of the center stand is so you can work on the bike at any time. Let's see, did I forget anything? I don't think. This should pop right off. And that cable will pop out on that side. And we'll slide the blocks underneath. And just let it rest. Here's what we have so far, and the next step is to pull that tire. Okay, so just like grandma, grandpa, maybe your dad showed you, maybe your mom, uh, start, here's the stem. We're going to start from the opposite side, just makes it easier. By the way, these tires, Pirelli, back when this thing was made, Pirelli, in the States anyway, were considered very exotic. Still are. They make nice, nice tires. I'm going to tuck this behind the... Uh, going to cheat a little bit. This will be my third hand for now. Pirelli Ciclomotore. So, these were made not for a bicycle, but for a motorbike. Since these are 16-inch tires, people will ask, well, can I use a, um, can I just use a bicycle tire? 
my kid's bike has a 16 inch tire, can I just use the same one and while it would fit, you can find them with the same dimensions. Um, not a good call because uh, those tires, you have to ask yourself, are these rated for a steady 20, 25, 30 miles an hour? In the bicycle realm, these are these would be considered high-speed tires. Think about how often you would ride. Some of these mopeds will easily go 30 miles an hour. How often do you go 30 miles an hour on your bicycle? Then you think, hmm, a bike with 16-inch wheels, 30 miles an hour, not going to happen ever. I don't care how steep a hill you're going down. So. No, you can't use bicycle tires <laughs> because they are not speed rated like these uh, Chico Motores are or the Kendas that we're going to replace them with. And these come off, as, as I showed you, they come off pretty easily. Now, let's, uh, here's a job for your JIS screwdriver. Let the rest of the air out. Make sure it's all out. There's always a little bit of air left. And you're just going to be able to Pull this off. Just pull again. Look, let's go opposite the uh, opposite the stem. Dig your fingers underneath. You're gonna get dirty. Don't worry about it. Just pull. And you're gonna take the tire and the tube together. And they're just gonna pop right off. Yep. Of course, we happen to be doing it where the rim was welded. It's usually right across from the from the stem anyway. And it can hang up there, but just be patient, work your way around it. See, we're pulling off the rim strip here too, which I predicted would be fused to the rim, so I was wrong about that, but it does look like it's a bit fossilized. We'll see what condition it's in when we get the tire off. There we go. And here's that rim strip. Okay. Now this, this is what protects the tube from these, from the ends of the, uh, of the spokes. This, wow, take a peek. It's, uh, you know, some people might argue we could use it again. But it's awfully narrow, and it's kind of hard. It doesn't feel like rubber anymore. It has the consistency of, uh, well, it's just brittle old plastic. I'm sure I could probably, well, well, I'd be destructive. We have new strips. That's what we'll use. Alrighty, with our tire, tube, and rim strip, the new rim strip, I'm going to put that on first. It's a little wider than the original. You can see here. I call this original because I think it has been in here. Uh, I think it's been here since 1978. I don't think these tires have ever been changed. Um, this looks like it's about a half inch and this is about a three quarter. A little wider I think is better in this case. Where is that? Ah, and there's the hole for the stem. So line that up, hold it there with your thumb, and then just stretch this around. Whoops. Easier said than done, like everything else on these bikes. Might have to use both hands. There we go. Now this has a lot of stretch to it. Ooh, I hope it doesn't pop, because if it pops here, I'm going to get smacked in the face. And I am not wearing eye protection. Safety glasses are a good idea, even when you're doing really banal work like this, because you never know when something will pop and smack you in the eye. Anytime something goes flying, though, it's going to hit you in the eye, so just keep that in mind. See, this wider one is really giving us better coverage. You can see that. 
perfectly sized for that slot where the ends of the spokes are sticking out. I also find that it helps to put some air in and oops. There's a little washer here too. That stays on here. Don't let that get away. Ah, there we go. That sounds better. Just a little bit of air. You're, probably, you're going to have to let it out later, but for initially putting this thing together, okay. Now, the tires. Before you drive yourself completely insane with these, take a look along the side and find the drive arrow. Right here. Drive this way. <laughs> Make sure that when you put it on the bike, think about how the wheel is turning and make sure the arrow is pointing the right way. That's the only way I ever get it right. So I have it oriented properly now. And I'm just going to keep it that way until the wheel is securely back on the bike. Make sure you don't twist the tube as you're putting it in. Just pop it in nice and straight. It's going to seem like it won't go in. It's going to seem like it's too big to fit in, but it isn't. There you go. That's in. Now, make sure the little washer is still on there. And of course, not exactly washer, right? Because it's dished. Okay, it's back on there. There we go. There it is. And keep that down low. And you're going to put it on. You definitely want to get the get the stem through the hole first. All right? Once one edge of the tire is going to be on the outside, the other will be on the inside of the rim. And then we're going to put this in. Once, that's, once you start doing this, you can start letting the air out of that tube as necessary as needed to get the thing on. You might want to use some soap. Sometimes I rub soap or wax on the rim to make it easier. Soapy water works. Put on a little more sudsy water and we're going to see if we can just kind of muscle this back on. Doesn't look like doesn't look like we're going to be able to muscle it. Remember, there's no shame in using the the, uh, the iron if you have to. Just be very careful not to stick it too far in. There we go. You can actually see as you push it across. <laughs> it might be too late if you see it, but you can see whether or not you're squeezing that that the um, the tube. This is the part where on your bicycle you get to this section and you're you're golden. On these bikes, it can be a little difficult, a little harder than that. Okay, one more should do it. Can we do it? 
There we go. So, we're ready to reveal the brakes. <laughs> See what we're in for here. It's another, this is another 17 millimeter. Um, you know, I'm just going to use the old adjustable this time. So there's a nut and a spacer. You have to keep track of those. Here's, ooh, and a long, long threaded axle. Here's the nut. Here's the spacer. Just keep them together. And don't, <laughs> don't forget the spacer when you go to put the thing back together. Or it just won't line up. Here are, here's the brake plate, and here are the brakes. When you look at the old brakes, you can see this edge here where the brake material meets the backing part of the shoe itself. It just, it goes 90 degrees down uh, around the corner here. It's just flat on the end. They want you to take a file and shave this down, file this down more at a 45 degree angle. Uh, and uh, I was all ready to do that, but the new brakes, the new brakes already have that. It's done. It's done already. Um, anyway, getting these out, there's no great to do about it. It's, uh, in fact, in the spirit of misusing tools, here's a uh, here's a tire lever. There's a little space under there. Actually, a better space under here. I'm just going to pry this up. There we go. And there we go. You just there's no forcing. You don't have to be big and strong to do this. You don't have to be big and strong to do any of this stuff. Uh, just use your use your tools, use your mechanical advantage. Okay, we're going to see about putting this, uh, putting the shoes back on the plate. Before we do this, we're going to put a little uh, white lithium grease on the cam and also a little on the pivot. White lithium grease is kind of the motorcycle magic uh, lubricant. Now, here's the cam. The flat part of the shoes. The flat parts of the shoes are going to rest on the cam. Make sure this is in the right position. You see the arm is sticking out here. It could also be this way, which would be wrong. Uh, make sure you can see it. It's the same. Check the orientation before you take it apart but the arm should be sticking out this way on this particular bike. Um, and we're going to... Oops! Now make sure this... <laughs> yeah, the springs, they never want to... They, they just refuse to work with you sometimes. Uh, whoops! Flip this over and we're going to... We're going to slip these over the pivot, the round ones over the pivot. you got to get them as far onto that as possible so they because there's a little bit of a groove there, and you have to get the um, tab into the groove, so to speak. Now we're pushing down, and you can feel the springs expanding. doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. Just take it easy. You heard that click. That was the uh, brake shoes settling into the groove up here. That's good news. And, ah, there we go. Done. And you can see the arm when we operate it. Twists, turns this cam, which spreads these outward so they can contact the drum. This is really the easy part. The brake plate goes back. I've cleaned this drum, the inside. Basically used a scotch Bright pad here. scotch Bright knockoff to clean the inside. You just want to get any buildup off of there. It kind of, sometimes you get buildup inside of the drum from heat, the brake material, it's almost like it melts off and then sticks to the to the drum like, uh, you know, like if you have an old frying pan and you 
you're cooking everything high heat over many years and then pretty soon that all the residue from the you know the bacon the bratwurst the, the caramelized sugar it all just stays on there you just can't get it off oh by the way you saw that I put in the spacer right here then the nut they call this the thin nut in the manual but it's not very thin it's just a little thinner than the one that holds the wheel onto the fork so uh, here we go that's a little bit tight I'm not going to tighten it all the way there wow I think that's going to be good okay done uh, now for the rear wheel the sad truth is that before we can start on the rear wheel we have to take the chain off and that involves finding the um, the master link again like an old-fashioned bicycle there it is it's coming up this is the star of the show right here okay I have a set of these clunky screwdrivers that are supposed to be ideal for this sort of thing and you really you have to spread it and push just there it's coming though it's coming here we go wow that was not too hard here's the master link clip here's the plate that goes under it Okay, there we go. You have to reduce the tension on the chain a bit. Despite my efforts to keep my hands not too, uh, to keep them somewhat clean, probably going to fail. But anyway, you just push those studs out, and there it is. There's that little gem. All right, well, that was much easier than I thought. This part feels really great. Just uh, going to degrease this chain because it's... Well, I was going to say it's really horrible, but it's not that bad considering the bike is 40-some years old. There aren't a lot of miles on this thing, less than a thousand miles if you can believe that. But uh, the chain is still pretty grubby, so... We'll spray it, brush it off, and uh, when we put it back on, it'll be clean. Okay, starting on the rear wheel, of course, as with the front, first step is uh, disconnecting the, uh, the brake cable. Handy 10 millimeter wrench. 10 millimeter will do much of the work on this bike. You'll learn after a while. So just loosen that. And then slide the cable out. You don't have to pull. You don't have to pull that out all the way. Uh, you don't have to pull the nut and bolt all the way out. There's a hole that runs through the back of this bolt. It's perfect. You've probably seen it if you ever worked on old bicycles or well, newer bikes have it that way too. Um, you've seen the same thing. Next. Again, uh, back to the um, 17 millimeter. Go there. We'll just start on the left side, and let's see. Whoops. There we go. Kind of daunting. Hear that cracking sound. Who knows when the last time was this wheel came off. We'll just loosen that. It's, uh, it's still... It's not quite hand loose yet. And I'm doing the... Um, loosening the, the right side as well. This is all pretty straightforward. I don't need to... I don't think I need to show you every little detail. Now I think this will come off, yeah, without without removing the fender. However, we do need to take the, let's get the nuts and the eccentric 
cam. This is a sweet little setup for adjusting the chain. Uh, get those out of the way just to clear this lovely uh, La Franconi exhaust system. It's wonderful. We have Pirelli tires, uh, La Franconi exhaust, and Delorto carburetors. Could we be talking about a vintage Ducati, perhaps? And there truly is nothing like a trusty 4x4 to um, elevate things to where you need them. Now this is nicely, nicely jacked up so that wheel just comes right off. So all is well. We just have to make sure that when we put it back on um, uh, that we engage this slot with the stud on the inside of the swing arm, which we will not forget to do. And now we can tackle the tire and the brakes. I've applied some of the uh, wet soapy water, uh, <laughs> excuse me, some of the wet soap rather. Um, just not too much water because otherwise, you know, you put too much water on there and the whole thing just sort of rinses away. Um, and use the tire lever to just, there we go. Just be careful with the levers. You kind of have to feel your way around inside the, uh, kind of dig your fingers up underneath, up inside to make sure that the, uh, the tube isn't getting in the way. And, uh, there we go. And let's see if we can, this on. I don't. I think the rim is clear. I think it is. I think it is. And there. Ah, so how old fashioned is that? So here we are. Here are the pads. So we'll kind of crank them over so they're facing each other. This is the how they're going to be oriented when, when they're uh, installed. Then they, like they say in the manual, put the, they tell you to put the brake shoes in a V formation, which they just mean kind of a V. Here's the V. In fact, here's the V. See that? Makes perfect sense. Not much is lost in translation. I have to say the instructions are pretty good. You really want to get it down on that pivot part in particular because there's a slot there that each shoe needs to engage. Then you just press down, spread that V out until it's flat, and up, oh, oh, those two clicks. That, those were the shoes engaging that slot in the pivot. So we're 90% of the way there. We just have to slide the cam end over the cam, and there we go. That white lithium grease helps with this operation, and it's also going to help uh, reduce friction when, uh, when we activate the brakes. Now, last but not least, we, we're going to slip the brake plate back on. This part is pretty straightforward. What were the other parts? We had the spacer. Don't forget the spacer. And that thin nut. There it is. We will get this on. Let's get these wheels back on and uh, or this wheel back on and uh, the chain and that should be it. Of course the fender is uh, always kind of in the way but you just work your way around it. Make sure this This uh, brace here is uh, engaged with the little pin on the, uh, the stud on the frame. Otherwise, the brakes won't work. This requires a little patience because if you pull the wheel back far enough to get it onto the frame, it starts bumping into the uh, into the fender. It's a tight squeeze, but not impossible. And there we go. Okay, it's on. These little eccentric cams, there's one on the other side too. They engage with this 
notch here to adjust the wheel fore and aft for chain tension. So we're going to leave those loose. Uh, we'll put this one, here are the parts we're talking about, the cam, the nut, whoops, and the washer, which if there's a chance to drop it, I'll drop it. Super. I'd say now the hard part, putting the chain on. Here's the chain, degreased, cleaned up, pretty clean. To get to that main sprocket up front, uh, you do need to take the cover off. You know, like with any fasteners you're dealing with on an old machine like this, just be patient, don't force anything. Gosh, some of these were <laughs> some of these were a little bit loose, so there we go. Hey, and uh, if you can, definitely drop them on the floor. Here's the sprocket, and we're going to bring it up from the bottom because it will only turn, the, it, it's only going to turn counterclockwise for you. So slide this up, screwdriver, the ever-present third hand. There you go. You just need it to engage, then it will pull itself through, but a screwdriver, again, improper tool, but super handy. Beats trying to stick your finger in there. I don't Okay, we're feeding it through. You can see the sprocket turning up front. You know, turns out my hands were slender and supple enough to uh, <laughs> pull the chain through between the swing arm and the wheel and the frame and all these other competing bits. Um, you know, an easier way to do it, if you slip a wire through through the end of the chain, you could probably feed it through pretty easily that way, fishing it. Whatever works for you. Let's turn that forward. There we go. Now, it's classic. Um, we've got the... Uh, Master Link. Slip that through the back, back here. It's great. See that that chain is quite slack, so we'll be fine. Seems like a whole lot of slack, but as soon as you start pulling back, that slack goes away, so we'll be fine. For now, let's keep as much as we can because it makes it easier. Uh, there's our master link in here. Here's our outer plate, and, and the clip, spring clip, which the only trick with this is that you make sure this little clip is, the closed end is facing forward and the open end faces the rear of the chain's travel. So, of course, Okay, it's on. All right, it is. And here's the play that they're talking about for the chain tension. They say in the manual, um, uh, seven sixteenths of an inch. Now, bottom line, it's a little, it's still a little bit loose. Okay, let's see how we're doing now. Oops. Roughly the midpoint of the chain. Ah, better. Now you don't need to force it, just... Ah, that's about right. Quarter inch up, quarter inch down. 
Just a couple of final housekeeping items and we'll be on the road.